What is up everyone? My name is Ross and if you're new here and you want to learn more about Photoshop photography and other various forms of multimedia, I highly suggest you hit that subscribe button today and turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss a thing. Today, we got another awesome tutorial. We're going to show you how to extend a background on any of your photos and I'm going to show you two methods. Uh, both of these methods, once again, I use pretty much in all the photos that I need to extend my backgrounds in. So let's hop into Photoshop. Today, I have this awesome photo uh, that I got from Unsplash.com. They are not a sponsor, as always. Um, but let's say, let's go over what would be the reasons why you'd want to extend the background. Well, the first one I can think of is Instagram. Instagram is notorious for wanting like square or four by five crops. So if you're shooting a horizontal image, but you still want to fill that space, you might want to extend that background. The second reason why you may want to extend a background is if you are doing any other graphic design related material and you need to extend a background to maybe add text or uh, you just need it to fill a, a print space or a web space. You know, you got Facebook banners and all that jazz. So today we're going to go over my two methods that I like to extend backgrounds. So with this image, Let's say this is your image and you shot it in this horizontal space, but you want to maybe make it vertical. Well, how would you do that? The first thing I would do is hit C to bring up our crop tool. And you can see up here, it's already got a, a ratio set, which you can define and make up your own uh, ratios and presets for this. But let's say that I want this to be the four by five crop that uh, Instagram allows us to be in a vertical space. Now you could crop it like this, but then we lose all the background. And what makes this shot uh, amazing, I think, is that background and that, uh, that environment. So I'm just going to pull up here and crop it so it's like a two-thirds, one-third like this. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but now we've got this, all these transparent pixels up here that we'd have to fill. Now, how are we going to fill that? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is hit Command-J, and then I'm going to grab the Marquee tool over here. It's over here. The shortcut for that is M on the keyboard if you want to use the fancy shortcuts, as we all do. And then I'm just going to click and drag and just overlap a little bit. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this. I'm going to overlap just a little bit um, so that Photoshop has something to chew on when we go to process this. Now, the typical way that we would do this is we'd hit Shift Delete and it brings up this Fill dialog box. And if you, it might be set to black, white, or foreground color, but you can do Content Aware if you're in the most recent version of Photoshop. Let's hit OK and see how this does. It's going to process a little bit. And you can see it does an okay job. Now I could start with this and I could use the uh, healing brush, the clone stamp and various other patch patch tools and various other tools to fix this up. But I'm not liking how this is. So I'm going to hit command Z to undo that. And if you go into edit content aware fill, there's actually this sweet new dialog box that Photoshop has uh, put in um, into the, the, the application and without even doing anything you can see that this way of doing it is much better in the way that it handles the corners and stuff but I still have this weird this weird she's got like a almost like a witch not a witch hat but a pointy thing coming out of her head so with this uh, when you go into edit content aware feral it allows you to then erase areas that you don't want the um, well the I think it's Adobe Sensei or whatever the brain is behind Photoshop that is going to use to fill the the empty pixels that we're trying to fill. I don't know if that makes sense, but essentially you can mask what the the application is trying to match for. And as you can see, it did a pretty good job, but now I still have some weird weird things going on. I'm going to just undo that. And I'm actually going to roll with our original here with the the pointy witch hat. I'm going to hit okay. I'm going to show you how I would clean this up now. So what you notice is it actually put this on a new layer. So I'm going to hit uh, Command Shift E to just stamp a new visible layer so that I can work non-destructively once again. I'm going to zoom in. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit L on the keyboard to bring up la the lasso tool. And I'm just going to kind of highlight or select this area. I'm going to hit Command J to uh, copy that to a new layer. And you can see now I can just kind of rotate this and make a new uh, hat brim. So I'm going to just kind of play with this a little bit. I'm going to say that's okay. And I'm going to get my uh, clone stamp out with S. I'm going to merge that again to a new visible layer so that I'm working non-destructively. And I'm just going to just going to clone. Just going to clone to clean this up. I should probably not have a soft brush. I'm going to go a little hard on this. And once again, I'm going to work quickly just to keep this uh this video moving along here. I'm just going to Fill this in like so. Now the trick here is if you're ever cloning something and if you have, uh, see how I've left space here? I do that because I can use the patch tool then and it's not going to do any funky business. I can just kind of drag it out. Well, it did do a little funky business there, uh, but that's a quick little tip tool. So quickly, 
I mean, this isn't perfect. You can see there's a little bit of issues up here, but that quickly, just using content aware fill, we've been able to um, pretty much go from this to this. Now her hat would actually need a little bit more work, but that is how I would do it. That's the one, the first way I would do it is content aware fill or going to edit content aware uh, fill. And once again, when you go to, uh, into the edit content aware fill, it gives you that new dialog box where you can actually erase the areas that it's kind of calculating that uh, fill from. Now, the second way that I typically do things, I'm going to jump into this other image here. This is an awesome image. This would be an image that maybe I could use for like a, a Facebook banner or a YouTube banner or whatever. It's a very horizontal shot. Well, let's say I want to make it even more horizontal. How would I do that? Once again, I would just hit C to grab the crop tool. And as you see, it's kept our four by five ratio. But let's say I want kind of a more uh, a stretched uh, anamorphic look that you see in cinema. So I've, I've created my own preset, which is a 2.35 to one ratio, which is a very narrow anamorphic kind of a uh, film look. So I'm going to extend this. If you hold, let's undo that. If you hold the option key and uh, drag, it's going to constrain that to basically pull out from the center. And I'm going to do that because I want to basically just extend the sides like so. Now, once again, we have those transparent pixels. Now, we could definitely use content aware fill on this again, but I'm going to show you another trick that I use. For, and this is a good candidate because we've got very uh, parallel lines running here and there's not a much of detail not a much of detail. There's not much detail in the background. So what I would do in this situation, I was I would hit Command J to duplicate this background once again to work non-destructively, and then once again hit M to bring up the marquee tool or just select it over here. And what I would do is I would just make a selection very close to her, but not selecting her. And the reason why I want to do this is because now I can go to Edit, Content Aware Scale. And if you've never used Content Aware Scale, basically once again the uh, the brain behind Photoshop is going to try to scale this without stretching any pixels that it doesn't need to. And it's not going to make sense, but I'm just going to show you anyways. So once again, we have like a transform box now here. And what we need to do is I think we got to hold shift. So the new version of Photoshop, it used to be you hold shift to constrain your uh, uh, proportions. You don't have to do that anymore, but you hold shift to basically warp or stretch, I should say. So I got to hold shift and I can stretch this out to the side. And look at this, it just kind of stretches it. Now if I go too far, it really gets really wonky. Uh, but I can go a, a pretty decent amount. Let's just go the whole way, because I think that doesn't look bad at all, and hit enter. And that's looking pretty good. That does one side. Now we can do the same thing to the other side, just cl uh, select very close to her, uh, obviously not selecting her, and then go edit, content aware scale again. Now this side might be a little bit trickier, because we don't have as much to work with. So I'm not going to go too drastic. I'm going to leave it right there. Now, we can use this with Content Aware Fill as well. So all I'm going to do is grab the Marquee Tool. Actually, I'm going to go here. I missed some pixels up here. I'm just going to do that, and I'm going to hit Shift-Delete. And it's going to bring up our Fill dialog again. It's set to Content Aware. I'm just going to hit OK. Let's see if it does good. And there you go. It did a really good job, actually. Uh, a little bit of messed up stuff going on down here, but that's easy enough to just cl clean up with the, the clone stamp tool. Let's grab that. Just quickly, let's see, my flow is a little bit low. There you go. So these are the methods I would use on most any image that I need to extend the background on. I'm going to use Content Aware Fill first and foremost, but when I have a good image that's a good candidate to use Content Aware Scale, I think that's what it's called, right? Yeah, content aware scale. I'm going to use that too, and probably in conjunction with content aware fill. And then lastly, you know, no stretched background or extended background is going to be perfect. So you're going to have to rely on the clone stamp tool, uh, the healing brush tool, and the patch tool. I hope this was helpful for you. It shouldn't be too scary. It's actually really easy. Now, once again, your image is going to define whether or not this is going to work for you. Uh, and if it doesn't, if it's really busy, you're going to have to rely on the clone stamp and patch tool. Maybe I'll do another tutorial showing a more busy background. But I just wanted to show you the built-in tools in Photoshop that are going to allow you to extend any background. And you're going to get awesome, bomb-ass photos in your Instagram feed. Once again, my name is Ross. I hope you liked it. I hope it wasn't too stressful. It wasn't for me this time around. Uh, but I will see you guys next time.